everyone, I'm Lisa Soames Peck from Spellbound Miniatures. Welcome to our YouTube channel and also chapter two of our Book Nook series. Today we're going to use some acrylic paints and create a nice faux stone wall paint job on these textured walls. Also, if you did want to join me in recreating the medieval look with the arched window wall at the back, I'm going to show you how we can use craft board to create not only the stone window surround and ledge but also using some extra stone bricks from the first chapter to add some detail to this wall too. So I'm going to show you how to do this one first and then we'll come back and we can decorate them all together. So here we are in design space and you can cut as many layers as you'd like from craft board You'll deboss only one of the layers, the other layers can be plain, and you'll also want to cut several window ledge layers. I did six window ledge layers and two plain arch window surrounds and one debossed window surround. Then you take your arched window wall and you draw a line about one and a half millimetres in from either side. The reason for this will become clear in a second. If you want to put some faux stones on this wall for added character, you'll need to inset them from the sides by that one and a half mil gap. So that when you glue the side walls onto this rear wall, it won't get pushed away from the side by the depth of the bricks. I used the leftover bricks from the first two debossing files to create this extra detail play around until you're happy how they look and then glue them on and press them down. The next thing to glue is the window ledge and because I had six layers I did three pairs first and then glued them on top of each other and then glue that onto the window wall making sure the top of the window ledge is exactly level with the bottom of the window cutout. Glue and press the window surround layers and then turn both the window wall and the surround over onto the mat. Bring the window wall over on top of the arch and you will see that there's a several millimetre overlap. This overlap is necessary to stop the stained glass window actually falling through the window hole. Make sure the bottom of the window surrounds sit onto the window ledge and that the overlap is even throughout the hole. Once you are confident with where it should fit, you can glue the back of the window arch surround and put it onto the front of the wall, locating it down onto the window ledge, and then just turn it over to check you've got an even overlap. I then pressed this whilst it dried. Okay, so we've got our three walls now, and it's just as good to have them all lined up so we can just do them all at the same time. I specifically chose this brown coloured craft board because I want that as my grout colour anyway. It's a nice matte, soft, light brown colour. I'm going to be going for a sandstone effect, but um, it's something to bear in mind that if you want either a greyer stone or a different colour stone, use the craft board that's the nearest to that and then it saves you having to paint everything. Um, and I don't really feel the need to um, let, cover this with maybe PVA or another sealant. Um, craft board's pretty resilient and I'm gonna be dry, um, not dry brushing, dry sponging on with a sponge to get the texture and the layers. So there's not a lot of water gonna be going onto this. If there was, I think you might want to seal it first. So I'm not worried about getting paint in the cracks because, or I'm not worried about trying to, so that I can leave that as a natural grout line. I'm going to be doing some very gentle taps on the top to layer up my colors. Um, I'm going to put an image on the screen now to show you the colour of sandstone I'm aiming at but there's a huge amount of artistic licence in this. Um, that particular sandstone is a little bit, I'd say, not quite as warm as this craft board brown. It's paler, slightly 
pinkier and greyer so that's what I'm going to add to this and slightly lighten it, lighten it up a bit more. It's going to be a small enclosed space with the backlight coming in so I don't want it too dark otherwise we'll never see what's in there. Um, so that's what I'm aiming for. I've got a couple of different things here I'm going to use. I've got natural sponge, I've got one of these um, it would be for uh, face washing, complexion type face scrub brush. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. It's just got an, a nice amount of close bristles, so it's great for stippling and texturing, um, but they don't actually bend very easily, so they won't go into my mortar lines either. And also an old toothbrush head, so for sort of, what's that, what would that be called? flicking and spraying paint drops on or even um, again if you haven't got one of these you could use that for a nice stippling texture. So I'm going to mix up several different paints. I'm probably going to start with a lighter grey first. I'm gonna, um, I'll mix that up, show you how I apply that and then I'll wait for that to dry and then I'll do my other colours layering on top. Um, I'm going to mix it with a white gesso base because that's nice and thick and acts like a primer at the same time. So I'll put most of um, the gesso in and then just add some warm grey tones to that. Probably a little bit of black, a little bit of brown and a little bit of pink and just to get a nice light warm grey. So I'll mix that up and then we'll come back. Or something near it. You can see the, the proportions that I've got, they might change from this, I'm not very scientific. The, that's magenta, raw umber and black. Um, so I'm going to mix those in and see how that comes out. Okay, so you can see it's a nice, slightly lighter than mid grey, difficult with the light shining on. Um, and it's relatively warm because I put the pink in there. I'm going to use the sea sponge exactly as it is because it's very stiff, which I want. I don't want it sinking into the cracks. And depending on whether you're left or right handed, I think today I'm going to work that way. Um, so you don't kind of keep going over the wet area. Put everything else to one side and then I've just got some spare blue paper or kitchen towel and a waterproof surface underneath so that we'll get some on the towel, dab it most of it off, um, so just like dry brushing, and then go over the bricks very gently and then just carry on like that. We're going to build this up in layers. It will take a while, but it will create a really natural effect. And again, you don't want it too wet so that you don't go over your mortar lines and squeeze into the gaps. And don't worry, I would say at this point about thinking, oh, I've got too much in one area and not in the other. This is the base coat, and then we're gonna add different colors to even out any gaps as you go. And you would, in any natural stone, you have concentration areas of color and lightness anyway. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cover all of this. I don't know yet for the piece of the, the book nook that's behind the scenes where we're going to backlight the window, whether I might want to paint that white or I might want to paint it more of an orange so that we get a sunset reflection through. So I'm not gonna worry. You can paint over that at the minute. I might go back and paint that white once I've got the light in there and I can play around with that. So I'm not too worried about going over there. And similarly for the window wall, I'm going to be doing this on the stonework and then it doesn't matter if it goes over onto the what would be the rendered or plastered part of the wall. I'm going to go in afterwards with a paintbrush and paint this a solid colour. I think probably again a lighter colour as if they had plastered the wall and painted it just to have a break from all the brickwork in the room. So I'm going to put some music on now and just happily dab away. You can't get it wrong, if you go over something, if you do something you don't like it, you can go over it again with another colour. Um, so have some fun 
and I'll show you at the end where I've got to. Okay, so that's the first coat on. It looks darker on camera than it does in reality and you'll notice that I kept my sponge in the same direction. A lot of natural stone walls you'll notice that the, I want to say grain, I don't know if stone has a grain, but the sort of layers, it has layers in it and it looks nice when they go in that the same direction. So rather than moving the sponge all different ways, I actually specifically wanted to keep this all going in a certain way. Um, so that's how I've done the window wall and then the other wall is the same. So then I took out some of the grey that I had, I put that to one side so I had less here. I've mixed in some more white and then a touch of yellow. So now I've got a paler, to me now it looks more like a natural cement colour than that grey. So I'm going to put that on now and just fill in the gaps where some of the orange is. And none of this is too thick so the natural orangey brown of that craft board can still come through. Um, and again, if this turns out to be the wrong colour, we can paint over it. I always like to mix a good batch of the base colour. You can lift bits out then and then still work. And they're kind of all going to have a tone from the first colour. So always mix a big bit and then you can just take bits out. And then if I ever want to go back over and get some of this grey again, I can use that. So get some cling film, put it over that, keep it airtight, and then you can still use that paint throughout this project. It will last a good couple of days if you put clean film on top. So I'm going to carry on now with this slightly lighter colour and do the same again. Okay, so that's the second layer on. That dried lighter. So um, you never know, sometimes things dry lighter or darker, so I quite like that. It's lifted the colour quite a bit. So the next one I'm going to go for is I've put in, I don't know if you can see that, that's going to come up. It's actually a pearlescent shimmer and whilst I want the walls to be matte because I'm going to put in a stained glass window and the light's going to come through I want and there's a lot of pink and, and lilacs in the stained glass it to reflect off the walls a little bit not massive gloss but just a luster so that's what I've used there I broke the lid off of it but it's called interference color shimmering violet so that's what I'm going to use next to um, probably, I think that's all I'm going to do three colours on here. We'll see how that covers. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. It's definitely lighter in person than it's showing on camera, but I think it's the level of colour I want, saturation even. You could start with the light colours and then go in dark. It's up to you. I don't think there's any rules. doesn't seem to make any difference other than the fact that you want at the end. So I went dark and then built up light. Up to you. I'm now going to colour the lightest colour that I used, which is this, had the violet shimmer in. I'm going to use that on my rendered plastered wall because then tonally the whole room will have the same tones of paint in. So I've got enough of that mixed up. I'm going to paint that on here. Um, and you can see, I don't know if that's gonna come out very well, how they're just three different shades of a very nice toned color based on a gray. There's a greeny gray and a pinky gray, and then I would say a, a more normal gray. And they've just, neutralized the orangeness of the craft board but I've still got what looks like mortar lines and there are some bits in between where the paint's gone but you won't see that in the box. If you wanted to you could flood 
um, these mortar lines with a lighter or darker paint as well but I'm quite happy with them as they are so I'm going to carry on now and paint this wall okay and then suddenly I think it looks quite different where we've knocked back the orange that it was there so I like that effect just a subtle difference between the back wall and the stones I will be taking some darker maybe a sharpie pen in grey and bringing out the grooves in the stonework there to look like cut lines um, and also if you wanted to this outer arch where we it sort of overlaps the edge to hold the window um, you could if you're sort of careful once it's glued really set the glue set you could get a needle file and actually just file the edges of where the cut lines are to make a sort of a definite groove there that would be a little bit more realistic so once the paint's dried I might try that um, and it will be a small file let me see if I've got one here uh, I don't know if you can see that just the edge there so you would take the edge and bring that round like that just to create a small um, dent to show up those bricks um, and you might want to run a bead of super glue around before you do that so it stops any of the layers coming apart that's kind of an extra detail if you want to do that um, but if you hold if I hold it up now you can see suddenly it's beginning to look like a medieval castle or abbey um, I'm quite happy with those I might come back and tweak it I'm gonna let it dry properly because everything the colors change as it dries so if I put that back that way now and see them all together I'm quite liking that I didn't even need to use these ones in the end the sponge was good enough so we'll leave that dry and then um, I'll do some extra detailing work um, maybe mark out the stones a bit more and then we'll come back so here we have the final dried walls I used a grey sharpie just to add the accent lines there for the cut stones around the arched window surround We'll probably go in with some weathering now and start marking out some, say, dusty corners and possible stains over the years to give it some character. And here's a close-up of some of the stones. And you can see how the different colours overlay each other and how the sponge has given a nice stippled effect to the surface. So thank you for joining me today. Next time I'll be showing you how I'm going to do the floor and ceiling in this book nook and then we'll be nearly ready for the construction part. And keep an eye out for our newsletter this week because we're going to be sending you a sneak preview of the absolutely gorgeous stained glass window that we're putting in this project. And we'll also be telling you where you can get the files and the tutorial to make it yourself. So you don't want to miss that. If you're not already subscribed to the newsletter, I'll put the link below so you can sign up this week. Take care everyone and I'll see you soon. <laughs>